Okay, good evening, everyone. My name is Tony Mancuso, and I serve as the Communications and Outreach Senior Specialist for the Summer Health Professions Education Program, also known as SHPEP. And tonight, you will learn about the week in the life of an SHPEP scholar in this virtual space. You will hear from a past participant um, who's on the line with us now, Jasmine, and she'll speak about her experiences in the virtual program, and you'll also hear from a few of our program sites. But before we get there, what is SHPEP? Well, SHPEP is the free six-week summer enrichment program for college freshmen and sophomore students who are interested in the health profession. Now, our program is committed to strengthening the career development of underrepresented and economically disadvantaged students while preparing them for a successful career in the health profession. And they can gain experience in, in any one of our health profession tracks, which are medicine, dentistry, nursing, optometry, pharmacy, physical therapy, and public health. And they will do that through any one of our 12 program sites, which are Columbia University, Howard University, Rutgers the State University of New Jersey, University of Alabama at Birmingham, who's on our call tonight, University of California, Los Angeles, and Charles R. Drew University, University of Florida, University of Iowa, University of Louisville, University of Nebraska, University of Texas Health Science Center at Houston, University of Washington, and Western University of Health Sciences. Now, what are the benefits of our program? Well, each student will receive a stipend, but more importantly, they'll receive guidance from current admissions deans, health professionals, students in health profession schools, and our alumni base of over 30,000 about how to pursue their profession of interest. Now, to, to be a part of SHPEP, you must be a high school graduate and currently enrolled as a freshman or sophomore in college. You must have a minimum overall college GPA of 2.5, be a U.S. citizen, a permanent resident, or been granted DACA status by U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services, and you could not have participated in the program previously. Now, there are other factors for consideration, and they include identifying with a group that's racially or ethnically underrepresented in the health profession, coming from an economically or educationally disadvantaged background, or having demonstrated an interest in issues affecting underserved populations. Now, our program sites engage in what's called holistic review, which means they're looking at more than just your GPA. They want to know your story. So it's critically important for you to submit a compelling personal statement and a strong letter of recommendation. Now, I want to stress that the help of our scholars always comes first. And due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the physical distancing guidelines, and the closure of some of our campuses, SHPEP will again be a 100% virtual experience in summer 2021. Now, last summer, we successfully delivered an online program to over 930 scholars, and we're joined by one this evening. Jasmine, can you go on ahead and introduce yourself? Yes, thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Jasmine Lopez, and I'm currently a sophomore at Arizona State University. I'm studying biology and global health with a minor in Spanish and certificate in cross-sector leadership. I aspire to attend medical school, and I'm very interested in orthopedics and sports medicine. I'm also in the ASU Next Generation Service Corps, where I pursue my social mission of advocating for increased access to equitable healthcare treatment for minority groups and increased representation of minorities in medicine. I'm a Summer Health Professions Education Program Ambassador, and I participated in the fully virtual program with Rutgers New Jersey School of Medicine this past summer of 2020 during the COVID-19 pandemic. I'm so excited to have this opportunity to speak with you all here, and I absolutely love this program and everything it's done for me. And I'm always available to help you in any way with mentoring for the SHPEP program or help with your personal, with your personal statement or the application. I can also put my email in the Zoom chat for you to reach out to if you have any questions. Thank you for that, Jasmine. Um, and thank you for offering to help these scholars. You know, I think at, at this point, you know, they're trying to figure out, you know, what the program's gonna look like. And really, can you tell us about your experiences and, you know, share with us your most memorable experience? For sure. So I would say that my most memorable experience was just 
every single experience throughout the program that made me feel empowered and inspired to pursue my dream of becoming a physician and attending medical school. And I would say that every single quote that I wrote down from the dean of the medical school and the program directors, and even one of the guest speakers who is in the process of applying to medical school had to be the most memorable from my SHPEP experience because I was so taken aback by their honesty and vulnerability and it gave us the safe environment to also be honest and vulnerable. And it really prompted us to think about how we can use our own experiences to propel us on our journeys and how we can see those experiences as so vital to embracing our backgrounds and unique life experiences in order to empower ourselves. Perfect. Um, could you tell us a little bit about your instructors and how was that um, experience like? Yeah, so all of my instructors at the Rutgers New Jersey School of Medicine were always very helpful, always available for questions and open to discuss any topics that we wanted advice on. They were very friendly and you can tell that every single instructor, mentor and, and TA wants us to succeed and wants to share all of their experiences about applying to medical school or taking hard STEM classes with us in order to help us in the future. And all of the SHPEP instructors stress how all of our goals, whether that's doing well in organic chemistry or physics or getting into medical school are able to be accomplished by us and that we're not alone because even in the program, we saw how a whole team of people is there for us who believe in us and in our success. And to me, that's a one of a kind experience that I hope all future SHPEP scholars cherish. Um, and yeah. Thank you. Um, could you tell us a little bit about your lab experiences and what, what, what was that like? Um, so there were a lot of lab activities and the activities consisted of learning about financial literature, community and public health lectures, asynchronous clinical simulations, mindfulness practices, yoga and HIIT workouts, and learning about healthcare policies when working with transgender patients or language barriers in medicine. Each of these activities were at least an hour long and instructed by someone who's very knowledgeable on the subject. All of these activities had purpose and each of us took something from them that will carry into our lifelong careers. And even though we couldn't be in person due to, due to the pandemic, Rutgers, New Jersey quickly adapted to the virtual format of the entire program and created a virtual experience that we all gained a lot from. And the clinical simulations online were very cool. And we basically had a virtual patient with an unknown injury or illness that we had to treat. And the program provided us with feedback on the actions that we took to help the patient. It sounds like you learned a lot. And it sounds like the program has really, you know, helped you on your pathway. Um, I'm just curious to hear, you know, how did you balance participating in SHPEP in your home life? So my experience was very unique because I was overseas with my family who lives in Germany for the whole online SHPEP program. But I told the directors of the program about my situation and the time difference and they made sure to let me know that I should still be able to participate in every activity. And they sent out surveys about our time zones in order to best accommodate every SHPEP scholar in the program, which I think showed how much they care about each one of us and wanted us to still be comfortable and feel a sense of belonging to the program even if some of us were in different countries during the pandemic. And this was especially important and special to me because I didn't expect to be in Germany for so long with my family, but obviously the global pandemic caused unprecedented events to occur. And I was so stressed about being able to complete everything for SHPEP and I was worried that I'd have to stay up all night in Germany in order to not miss anything. But with me talking to the Rutgers SHPEP staff about the time difference, I was able to participate in every single lecture and activity with SHPEP because the program took place in the mornings in Easter time, which ended up being the evening in Germany and that worked out very well. Um, so for me, this especially touched me because I felt stressed and isolated being in Germany for so long and with all of the travel bans that were issued. Um, but all of those feelings dissipated when I was able to fully be involved with the program despite the time differences and extenuating circumstances for so many people. And it's an experience I'll take with me for the rest of my life and into my career in medicine. Wow, so you participated in Germany. Um, I could just imagine that, you know, what type of time difference that was between where you were and where the instructors were. I'm curious, how did you interact with the students and staff? You know, I know, you know, you're, at diff you're in a whole different time zone. How was that like? 
Um, so there is still sufficient interaction and I was able to interact with the students in the group chats that were made with every participant in the program and with the other students in my academic group for physics and organic chemistry. And it was a really valuable a really valuable experience to be able to be in the same group as so many people with the same interests and goals as me who can relate with me about what it's like to be a colored person in America or be a part of a racial minority taking these really hard STEM classes and pursuing a competitive career. And I think a lot of us know what it's like to be one of the few colored people or someone that identifies with a minority group in a STEM class or a lab and to be in a program with so many people that can relate with your experiences was just one of a kind. And that alludes to the whole mission of SHPEP, which is to empower minority students to pursue their dreams and just reassure us that we have every capacity to achieve our goals, even when inevitably we'll face barriers, which are so relevant to us rather than the majority. And I also love to listen to everything that the staff had to say and all of the pieces of advice that they left us, a, left us with. And we had the opportunity to listen to the Dean of Rutgers Medicine and all of the program directors. And I kept a journal of memorable quotes that they said because they had so much, to, so much wisdom to share with us that I believe will be key to reflect on when applying to medical school and writing our personal statements. And it gave us the opportunity to reflect on our life experiences and how we can apply them to our journeys of attending these professional programs that we aspire to attend. And hearing from these very accomplished and intelligent people that every single one of us in the program is capable of doing everything we set our minds to was again, a one of a kind experience that we're going to carry with us for a long time. And when our time comes to share our experiences and advice with future generations, I believe I'll aspire to be as caring and honest as they were with us. You know, I know you mentioned, you know, being, you know, SHPP's mission and empowering minorities. And, you know, sometimes we go through different things, right? And just given like everything that happened this summer, you know, not only the pandemic, but the racial issues that really came to the forefront. How did your program side adapt? I guess I'm curious more so like, you know, what types of sessions did they host and how did mentoring come to play? That's a good question. So throughout last year, we all witnessed on the news and online the horrible tragedies of police brutality, protests to uplift the voices of Black people in America, ice splitting families up at the border, the sexual abuse that occurred in those children who were detained, the COVID-19 pandemic, which has not proportionally affected different communities in America because the less wealthy communities have had less access to quality and equitable health care, which do statistically tend to be associated with racial minorities. The xenophobia that those from other countries or, nat or nationalities face due to discrimination and association with COVID-19 and the leadership of America not giving a voice of justice and respect to all Americans, which includes all racial minorities, all women and all LGBTQIA+. And so we've all borne witness to the effects this has had on America and for all of us who may identify with these people and groups who have faced this discrimination, inequality and disrespect. And so taking all of this in with my experience with the Summer Health Professions Education Program, it's even more powerful and even more special to be in such an amazing program, which is fully centered around empowering us as those who identify with any of the issues that we've borne witness to in America at this time to reflect on our life experiences and why we identify with these minorities and these complex problems that America is facing and how we as future health professionals can use these reflections of our own life experiences in order to treat future patients who come from these poor communities, who identify as racial minorities and or LGBTQIA+, who come from different countries and backgrounds in order to deliver them with treatment that is equitable, fair, quality, and delivered with the utmost respect, which is what every single patient deserves. To give us the exposure to what this will entail in the future, they hosted a great variety and curriculum for the virtual SHPEP program, where we learned a lot about important topics, including transgender health, public health policies, including how language barriers are addressed, epidemiology concepts, nutrition and diabetes broken down by different populations, financial literacy for us who don't come from wealthy backgrounds in order to achieve our goals and more. And so I'll say every single session with SHPEP is valuable. And I just know that if and when you apply for this program and that you potentially get in, you'll gain so much from all of these sessions in order to take with you into your journeys of being a healthcare professional. Thank you for that, Jasmine. And, and honestly, like, it sounds like 
you know, there, you know, you've learned so much from this program and it's really helped you on your path. Now, I'm sure later on through this presentation, um, you're going to hear from the audience and you're they're going to ask a bunch of questions. So please still stay on the line. Um, so you can give more insight from your personal experiences. Um, now I'm going to turn it over to the University of Alabama at Birmingham. Um, take it away. Hi, good evening, everybody. Uh, my name's Carmel McNicholas Bevensey, and I'm the program director at UAB. I'm also joined on the call by two other members of our team, uh, Dawn Pfizer and Carolyn Maddox. So what I'm going to do is kind of take you through um, some information that you've already had and then talk about how we've implemented the program in the virtual platform. So if I can get my slides to advance, there we go. So our goal is to help you in your journey towards your chosen profession. So in, at UAB, we have dentistry, optometry, medicine, and PT uh, students, pre-health students. And so we gear up sessions that are respective to their chosen professions, but we expose them to the careers because sometimes you can kind of see something different that you hadn't thought about before and maybe change your mind in what direction you want to go. So most of our sessions are, are to be held by all, to be um, um, uh, participated in by all our, our, our uh, Chapet students. So we're trying to help you jumpstart your career. So these are just some photographs from our cohort two years ago and we still were in person and I'm going to show you some other kind of what it now looks like in the virtual uh, platform. Again, we're hosting medicine, uh, dentistry, optometry, and physical therapy. And last year we hosted it four week program. This week, this year it'll be a six week program. And so basically what we're gonna do is help you prepare for your chosen career path. So this, I'm gonna skim through these two because this material you've already been um, talked to about. So some of the professional development pieces that we do, um, we, we do academic classes and I'll go more into detail about that in a moment. We also have writing classes. So one of the key pieces of accessing any professional school is a powerful professional statement, personal statement. So we teach you how to write a personal statement and how you can improve on that. So you're guided in this, you write your first draft and then our professional student mentors actually help you fine tune that. Now it may change with time, but you've got a really, really solid foundation when you submit your applications with a personal statement. We also talk about interviews and interview technique and also um, do a mock interview. So this again is discipline specific. So you meet with a faculty member from each of the different professions and you perform a, a standard 30 minute one-on-one -on -one interview. We also provide in-person shadowing in, when we're here at, at UAB, but this year what we're gonna be offering is what we're calling tele-shadowing and I'll go into more detail about that in a moment. Normally when you're in person, we'd offer CPR certification, but again, because of the virtual format, we're somewhat limited in what we can do. And so we're actually doing an instruction in how you would perform CPR. You won't get the certification, but you'll get the practical knowledge in that. Some of the things that we try to do is, is set you up with networking. Networking is critical in anybody's career. And what we're also doing is we're networking our past cohorts with our present cohort. And one of the advantages of Zoom is that we can have regular meetings with our past students. We're doing these every other month so we can kind of check in, see if anybody is, you know, what they're doing, what they're at, where they're at in their stage. And also we talked about what kind of things are you able to do since in-person shadowing isn't available right now or volunteering what has been done in a, a virtual format that, or you know, how you can still gain experiences that promote your, and um, will increase your resume when you start to apply. Then we have some recreational activities that we'll be doing in the, in the virtual format and some cultural events also. So in, at UAB, our program runs from June 7th this year till July 16th. Prior to day one, we want you to hit the ground running, so to speak. So we're gonna be hosting some informational sessions. You'll get to meet your, meet your professional student mentors so you can start building those relationships. So students that are already here um, will actually apply to be a professional student mentor and you'll be assigned a group and they'll be um, particularly for your own discipline as well. So you'll have cross-discipline 
interactions with the mentors as well as discipline specific interaction. The other thing that's kind of cool is, well, I'm sure this is true for the other sites. So you'll be getting a nice little care package that that's delivered out to you. So you'll have some what we call our swag. So you'll get some free water bottles and, and a variety of of other items and you'll also get um, some books, you'll get some chemistry kits, we're going to send out suturing kits and some surprises in there too. So we haven't decided all that's going in that box, but it's a nice it's early Christmas present for you. So it's something nice to look forward to. And then we also have some uh, frequently asked questions available that you can find out information and if there, your answer to your question isn't there, our team is more than happy to help with that. So again, we're going to be via Zoom in our session. Um, our academic enrichment is asynchronous. So the, what, what that means is we have our academic enrichment program on Canvas is the format, the platform that we use. So on your own time, you'll be studying the topics that are listed here. So we do anatomy, physiology, organic chemistry and biochemistry and your choice of organic versus biochemistry depends on whether you've already taken um, organic chemistry. So it's it's dependent on what you want to do. Or if you want to have a primer, you can do both. That's entirely up to you. And then we also run a course on statistics. So the way we structure it is the material is posted in Canvas in a week by week basis. And then each week you'll have a quiz that you'll take to pass on to the next week. And so it's to kind of keep you on track and it's self-testing. It's not for credit. It's entirely self-driven how you approach this, but it's um, We'd strongly recommend that you actually do participate in the in the quizzes. We've heard from past students that they wish they'd taken it more seriously because it actually does prepare them for their upcoming courses. And as I said, this is going to be on Canvas. Um, the the um, lectures are recorded, pre-recorded, and so you can listen to them at your own time. We're aware that we have multiple time zones involved, and so scheduling classes is very tricky when we have multiple time zones. So it's at your own pace. If you have jobs, then you can kind of work around those times as well. So you can get the content, but it's on your own time. And as I said, we'll get test quizzes. And then what we have is you're not left on your own. We're not going to dump this material into Canvas and then you're left to, to continue. The professional mentors will actually guide you. So they choose areas that they feel strongly. If they're somebody that like me loves physiology, then you teach physiology. And so the, your mentors will teach you, but we also have check-ins with the faculty that provided those lectures as well. So it's, again, depending on need, but you can contact the, the faculty and then you can get help from the professional mentors and they set up group meetings where they go through the material together. So everybody kind of helps in that team building type approach. It's also, again, it's a great networking opportunity. Because of the time zones, we have our synchronous session, so our, where you will actually have to log into Zoom between the hours of 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. Central Standard Time, which is where we are here in Birmingham. And that can be variable as well, dependent on sometimes we may start a little early and maybe go a little later, depending on what we've got going on. But it's rare that that happens. We try to keep it very structured so that you can kind of work around that with your lives as well. And we've got many sessions where we're accommodating small groups and those a lot of those will actually be repeated. And so there may be two days where there's a lot on the schedule, but you only actually have to attend one of those sessions. So you get a big chunk of spare time. And we have regular meetings with the Chapep leadership. We have check-ins all the time. We're, um, we log into every session. We're available to stay after for conversation if needed. So we're freely available to you. We want you to succeed and we're, we're really, really committed to helping you. So we're, we're here for you and we can set up sessions, meetings outside of the time too. And so the academic enrichment again is asynchronous. It's on your own time, but it's not on your own is the point I'm trying to make. The material's there, you study it on your own, but you're not left to flail alone. You will have guidance along the way. And so again, you'll have those mentor sessions and also faculty check-ins. Then, as I mentioned, we will help you present, um, start to produce your personal statements. So we start with a lecture um, that tells you about how to formulate a personal statement. And then we have the professional students, um, professional student mentors meet with you one-on-one -on -one to discuss your statement. And it's always good to get multiple people to listen to a professional or read a professional statement. So 
basically we're, we're here to, to read those too if you want additional input. We also work on study skills. Everybody can always improve their study skills. So we talk about different ways, different methods of learning. So when you, you know, as, as you go, as you advance in your student career, it gets harder and harder. So we wanna make sure that you have all those skills available to you that you can draw upon as you go along. We also have an admissions panel. So each of the different schools will have representatives from the, from the admissions offices and we have a, a Q and A, they, they do a presentation and then we have a Q and A session as well. Um, we also, as I mentioned, we have in, an interview. So we talk about interview technique and in this day and age, virtual interviews may not be going away anytime soon. And there may be some primary interviews that you'd have via Zoom. So we'll talk about a Zoom interview as well as an in-person interview, how you'll behave in, in both those situations. It's pretty much the same, but there are some subtle differences um, such as looking into a camera rather than looking directly at a person's face. So we teach you some of those skills that will hopefully help you when you actually come to interview. And then we give you a mock interview. And then the great thing is you get feedback. So you can actually improve on interview skills rather than waiting until it's a high stakes interview. And then you're, um, you're finding that the feedback's coming because you maybe got rejected. So we want to make sure that if there are any kind of characteristics that can be helped and improved on that we, we, we tutor you in that and we help you get through that. We also do clinical experience and exposure as well. And so what we do is we have discipline specific sessions. So in medicine, um, what we do is we talk about the career in medicine and the application process. This is a picture of, of one of our team members, Mrs. Jenna Blythe-Tier, who um, you'll get to meet one-on-one. -on -one. She'll go through a checklist of things that you need to go to when you start to apply for medical school. And then we'll have an admissions team presentation. Then we talk we get into kind of like more fun stuff where we're gonna talk about taking a patient history. And um, this year we're introducing teleshadowing. We've just piloted teleshadowing and telehealth shadowing. Teleshadowing is where you're in a similar situation to this where you're in a Zoom meeting, but you're actually zooming into a doctor's office and you get to observe the doctor patient relationship and you can reflect on that relationship. It counts for shadowing time in your applications and it will help you in sort of deciding whether medicine is a career for you after all. And then telehealth shadowing is like when you phone into your doctor um, and then, or do a FaceTime in with your doctor, then it's your part of that call. And so there's two different modalities, one where you're part of the actual patient call and one where you're part of being in the room with the doctor. And then we, we also, in preparing you for these activities, we talk about taking a patient history. So you, you don't start and not know how to ask a patient the questions. And so you practice that with a standardized patient. So we work with our Office for Standardized Professional Education here at UAB, and we have a, an encounter. So you get to give to ask questions and take a history from two patients, standardized patients. So these are people that act as a patient and they're very basic, Kind of problems so don't worry that you're going to be doing something that's way above your head that's not what we're we're trying to do we also have a, a variety of simulations and i'll talk about a couple of those as i mentioned we'll have a cpr demonstration we have case discussions we talk about various um, medical issues and then we talk uh, with a clinician about how they would be approached and sort of kind of give you a glimpse into what you would be doing in medical school and then we're going to have clinicians from, from a variety of disciplines talk about a day in their life. Each discipline has a different approach to things and different things that you get to do so you can learn more about that. We'll also talk about the team aspect of medicine. We're also going to do some interactive sessions. We're built, still building our, um, our program right now, but we'll be sending out suture kits in your goodie bag. And so you'll be getting a, a suturing kit. And so we'll do an online suturing lesson and so you'll get to, to do that as well and then we have meetings with your professional student mentors they're already in medical school so you'll talk to them as well and then this shows just a, a couple of the simulations so we have an opioid simulation where you actually go it's an it's a virtual simulation you go in you play the role of a person who is actually suffering from opioid use disorder and you get to experience a li her life for about a month and the things that she has to face, decisions that she has to make and how that impacts her and her young child and her, her and her pregnancy. And then um, we talk about 
after the after the simulation, we come together in a group, as is shown here, where we talk about what what your experiences were. We also enhance that experience by watching a a HBO an HBO documentary. This warning: this drug may kill you. And then we unpack that with a, a psychiatrist who's also an addiction medicine specialist. So you can kind of look at things from a family perspective. You get to live the, the life of a person in opioid use disorder. And then we get to kind of debrief on that and talk about how that experience helped, made you feel and what you learned from that. And then similarly, we have a poverty simulation where you get to, uh, again, it's virtual. You get to live for, uh, four weeks where you're on limited income the challenges that you face, the decisions you make and how they impact you and your family. And again, we do a debrief to talk about that um, and how, how you can then go on to take that information to your own communities, look for things like food banks for um, any kind of facilities that are there to help people. For example, if, they're, if you're in need of a free clinic, we find out where those free clinics are here in Birmingham. But then you can go back to your own home state and, and towns and look for, for the same sorts of facilities and, and opportunities within your own within your own environment. So optometry, we have um, Dr. Sim, Gerald Simon is, um, is our faculty member who you'll have one on ones and he's incredibly uh, he'll he'll convince you to come to UAB. Believe me, he's very dynamic with that. And so he's going to talk and then I'm having a couple of head nods down there. Um, so he'll tell you about uh, the career in optometry, and he's also going to take you through the application process and do a, a, an, a, um, an interview with you. And then we also have the student mentors, and then we also do some case discussions that are specific for the eyes. Dentistry, Dr. Michelle Robinson will also be counselling you and be giving you guidance on the applications process and the, and the role of the dentist in their careers. And again, we'll have lectures that are specific to the dentistry uh, profession as well as meetings with mentors and also we have some rather disgusting pathology <laughs> lectures as well uh, on dental so it's you'll get to, to see some kind of more advanced pathology as well so um, and then also we do interactive sessions so there's build a tooth and a dental exam and so I've got a picture to show you about the build a tooth in just a moment but those are some of the activities that we do with dentistry and then physical therapy. We have actually anatomy and physiology that is specific to the physical therapist and more bones and bones and muscle type physiology than your general gut and heart physiology. And then again, same thing, you'll be meeting with professional students as well as um, mentors and uh, faculty from the, um, the School of Physical Therapy. So this is the builder too. So they, they, these are students that are displaying their rather green teeth. It was made out of Irish spring. So it was, they were rather pungent teeth, but they smelt rather fresh. So that was nice. And also what's shown here is um, a maze where you have to use a mirror, the same as a dentist does when they go into your mouth and draw things backwards. And it is really hard. So it's it's very challenging. And I think I've got good hand-eye coordination, but I, I learned quickly that I don't when I started doing that. So it's a lot of fun. And also what we um, want to provide is some cultural competence. I haven't got a watch here. So uh, am I, oops, sorry, am I okay on time? Um, I've just got a couple more slides to go. Okay. Um, so what we, we use is uh, Dr. Sinko, Tracy Sinko is another one of the PIs for, the, for our program. And she um, does sessions where you talk about your cultural background. So they, they're called cultural scrolls where you, you basically draw a, your story, so to speak, and, and then you present it to the class. And we get to learn about all our different backgrounds. And even though I'm Caucasian, I'm from England and where I grew up is very, very different than living here. So, you know, we all have our own sort of um, backgrounds that we come with and it's sort of enriching to hear about everybody. And then we also read through the Henrietta Lacks, the, the immortal life of Henrietta Lacks and talk about ethics in medicine and what happened in regard to uh, her case where um, her cells were taken and are still used to this day. And sort of the story behind that and what that impacted in medicine and ethics in medicine and just rights in general. And then we also have a, a person, Dr. Derek Greenfield, who's a very, very dynamic speaker and he, he talks about inclusive and developing inclusive um, excellence. So it's a, a really dynamic, again, it's all via Zoom, but it's all very dynamic. He draws people in, he sends you out into small groups, you get to talk about your, your own experiences and background, and he poses questions. And it's it's really, 
it's it's a really fun exp um so not everything is lectures and it's a lot there's a lot of interactive stuff that we do as well and then we talk about the lgbtq community plus community the magic city acceptance center tells us about terminologies that should be used and and how to you know kind of incorporate that in your own medical practice too and then we also talk about vulnerable populations so we have uh, three speakers that come in and talk about food banks and different aspects of, of patients who maybe don't have health care um, and also um, some other some of the topics that they they talk about too and then as was talked about before we talk about health disparities and this summer we had um, a session on um, health disparities with covid and especially with the African American, the discrepancy between the responses in that in that population versus other populations, and um, actually the dean of our medical school, as well as two other faculty members, presented what was known at the time, and it was still pretty early on in in the COVID uh, pandemic. But they talked to us about what was what their thoughts were and what's what was known at the time about um, about the pandemic and health disparities within the pandemic. And then um, another, as was mentioned before, we have um, the Robert Wood Johnson presented um, financial workshop, but we also have a session with our one of our financial advisors from the School of Medicine. And we talk about you know, ways to plan your finances, plan for the future, don't overspend on or over, you know, take on loans, what kind of loans are good, what aren't good, aren't good. And so they take you in a really good way through thinking about your finances, because if you want to do an undergraduate degree and then go into a graduate school, it's very, very expensive. So you've got to, you've got to plan ahead and think what's the best way to, to manage your finances. And it ain't all work. We try to make it fun too. And we're actually going to, since this year is going to be a little bit longer, we'll have, be able to do some more social sessions as well. So we're going to have some community building activities. We'll do some social gatherings. We're going to have movie nights. And actually we watched when, um, um blanking on the name of it now there was a, a, a carolyn can correct um chime hamilton. In. Yeah, hamilton i couldn't think of the name at two o'clock in the morning when they launched hamilton so there were several of us on a zoom call at two o'clock until about six o'clock in the morning and it was a huge amount of fun and one of the highlights of last year not saying i'm going to stay up at two o'clock again this year but it was it was a lot of fun we'll do we'll do some movie nights and we're going to have prizes so we're going to have prizes for academic achievement we'll give some of the random prizes and things to kind of help kind of you know keep people engaged we're going to design a virtual prompt not sure how that's going to look but we're going to leave that up to the students to to come up with some plans for that and then we have a virtual closing ceremony and as i said before um after the summer, once you've finished with the program, that's not the end of it. We're actually having regular check-ins and we've actually um, initiated teleshadowing and we've, we've offered this to both our past cohorts. And so they're actually gearing up now to start shadowing in, in this online format. And we have also recruited some of our past students to help with the Birmingham City Schools in virtual tutoring. And that's actually a beneficial um, line item on your, on your application. So it's something, something good to have. So we want to stay in touch. We stay in and mentor you as, um, you know, we're always here at the end of a phone call or at the end of a, a, uh, an email and even our students call in in person when, when that is allowed. So I believe that's my last slide. So um, thank you for your attention and uh, I'll pass it. I'll stop sharing my screen at this point and um, I'll pass it back to Mr. Mankiw. So thank you for your attention. Thank you, Dr. Big Nicholas and Ben Vinci. Um, honestly, you gave us a lot to think about as far as like, you know, how, how things are done at your program site. And honestly, just hearing like the passion you've had and even the dedication, you stood up till six in the morning watching Hamilton, like, you know, amazing, you know? And, you know, I, I think you'll hear a lot of that passion. I, 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 I hear it and I, I, I love the passion and I'm pretty sure that you'll hear a lot of this, a lot of this passion as you start learning about the rest of our program site. I am now going to um, um, introduce the University of Texas Health Science Center at Houston. Um, go on, they should, we should be able to take it away. Give me one second as we share, our, as we work on sharing, and take it away. So hello everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Dr. Robert 
uh, I'm the Associate Dean for Student and Academic Affairs at the School of Dentistry. And so as you can see on this slide, our program consists of three components, nursing, medicine, and dentistry. But what I wanna stress about this is the fact that this is an interprofessional um, program and that it doesn't matter which of those three programs you come in doing with us, almost always we do these as a full cohort so nursing, medicine, dentistry, doesn't matter. These things that we do, you do together. We want you to learn from each other. Many of the students coming in think they want to do medicine, have never seen nursing or dentistry, find out, wow, that actually might be a better fit for me. So we've always felt that the inter interpretation part of it kind of best suits what we try and do. Next slide, Tony. So I'll skip down to um, the personalized pr preparation. And what you're going to see from our presentation tonight is we do things very similarly. There'll be a few things that we might do different, but one of the big things that we're trying to do in our program is to get you prepared for application to that professional school that you're going to apply. So mock interviews, you know, writing your personal statement, you know, working on your, your study skills, whatever, because it will be different once you get into that professional, professional program. The clinical experience is part, we're gonna have a lot of people come in and talk to you about it. Typically it would be a, be a hands-on thing, can't do it. Getting you to understand there's different career possibilities in the different health professions. You know, you might think medicine, but there's all kinds of different physicians, dentists, nurses, you know, which way do you wanna go? And then financial planning is also a really big part of what the program encompasses. Next slide. So you can see if you skim through here, I won't go through every one of these, blow by blow, but you know, our academic enrichment portion of the program is kind of our way of getting you some um, information and classwork, if you will, in some of the basic sciences. So for us, we have an anatomy, a histology, and physics all kind of rolled in together. We do organic chemistry, some statistics, um, physics. We probably won't do physics this year because we've got to kind of truncate some things down. And then public health will be a huge part of what we do in this. We're always wanting you to have a public health role in any professions you're going to. Um, our content with our different skills, whether it be study, study skills, we're gonna work on you on speaking skills, uh, career planning and financial assistant, and then teamwork skills. Um, everybody who comes in does a final presentation in our program where you work together as an interprofessional group and we give you a healthy issue and ask you to do a presentation about it that will include aspects of medicine, dentistry, about that. As I mentioned, we're gonna work a lot with you relative to applying your professional program and understanding what that professional program is like. We have multiple students from all the different programs who will come through, you, come through, talk to you about the program, help you with understanding what professional school is all about. Because so many times students like I said, they believe that they want to be one certain profession. We see this as that opportunity to try and learn about all kinds of health professions and career choice that might be best for you. Um, uh, let's see where I want to get down to. Um, next to the last bullet point about interprofessional practice and education. Um, interprofessional education and care is very important to us. And we want you to understand how as healthcare teams, you work together in treatment of patients. It's not that medicine or nursing or dentistry is a silo that stands alone. They work together for the betterment of patients. And then health policy and establishing a culture of health. I don't think a lot of students initially understand how much that education and prevention play a role in the health professions. And so one of the things we always try and do is get our students to understand that it's not just about you know, what you typically think about a, a physician or a dentist or nurse doing, but so much of it is education and prevention. And we want you to understand right from the start why those are so important um, and why they play such a vital role in, in professions going forward. Next slide. Okay, so this just kind of shows you if you look around the wheel or whatever that our scholars, we immerse them in a lot of different things. Um, you know, it's funny, you think spiritual, what do you mean? This case of where we're going to make you reflect and think about yourself. You're going to spend a lot of time just going through and, you know, self-analyzing, if you will. As I mentioned, why are you thinking about going to that health profession? Um, what's the career pathway you want to take? And so we bring all these different um, 
aspects of it into it. One thing will come up in just a minute that's not on the wheel here is wellness. We do a lot to really stress wellness in our program and make sure that our students are mentally, physically doing okay. You know, especially in this time of COVID and everybody's virtual. You know, I don't have you there to physically, hey, how are you doing? Everything okay? And so wellness plays a huge part of what we do. You know, we're going to talk about mind and talk about body and how things that you can do to help with your mental wellness, your physical wellness, and how they make you better at what you're going to be involved with. Next slide. So in our academic enrichment, so a couple of different uh, specifics that we had last summer was, you know, that culture of health. Um, you know, when you think about people, think about yourself, your family, you know, um, eating healthy, we talk about. And what does eating healthy mean to different people? And what does eating healthy mean if you are somebody who has money versus somebody who doesn't have money? You know, can everybody go shop at a Whole Foods? Um, market? You know, the typical answer is no. Um, why do oftentimes, you know, a certain group of people not eat as healthy as others? Well, economic a huge role in this. So how do we create a culture of health regardless of, you know, what you're referring to? Um, we'll do something about health policy. Office of Civil Rights comes in and does a presentation. And then we spend time on the art of communication. What we have is people from the Museum of Fine Arts come over and do a hands-on activity with our students. They'll do a short presentation, and then we break everybody into small groups, and they talk about communication. And it's something we all take for granted, but how do we communicate with different people? How do you communicate with people of different backgrounds, of different socioeconomic groups, with your faculty, with fellow you know, scholars? And it's an important part of what we do. Ethics, we have a big ethics case. Well, actually, we have two ethics cases students go through that we break them up into small groups again and it's getting students to understand how ethics and professionalism play such a vital role in the health professions it's another one of those areas that we tend to take for granted and maybe not think about and put a lot of emphasis upon but it's important going forward of you know thinking about how these um, two aspects ethics professionalism are the, at the core of what we do in our health professions uh, next slide Okay, so in our art of communication, we talked about it, you know, we're going to get the, our, our teams together, or whatever. Observation, listening, and then writing. Our students do you know, a couple of writing events, six weeks in the program. So one, you can go look at this line. One of the things that we do is something called um, six word story. And I don't know if you've ever seen this, but it's an incredibly power opportunity that you write six words, and what do those six words represent to you? Um, you know, it's a case of where uh, one of the classic ones was um, from either Steinbeck or Hemingway. I apologize for not thinking of that, but it's a thing where the six words are like new baby shoes, you know, for sale. What does that mean? It's, I mean, what happened? So everybody has their own personal story. It's a way for us to get you to write a personal story. And in six words, we discuss, we talk about it. We listen to each other. And it plays such a powerful um, role in getting all of our scholars to kind of learn about each other and learn their stories, learn where they're coming from, where they're headed to. On this last bullet point about patient profiles, a couple of standardized patients come in and we have standardized patients play certain roles and get you to see what it's like, kind of like that day in the life of a health professional. So um, what if you're someone who has to work with a difficult patient? What's it like to work with that patient who won't tell you any information? What's it like to work with all kinds of, you know, everybody's not the same walking in the door. So we want you to kind of role play and see what it's like to get involved with in all kinds of different patients and opportunities and how um, learning in the health profession not just about learning about, you know, the Krebs cycle or learning about, you know, certain techniques. It's also learning so much about people and how to work with people. Next slide. So in our ethics case, there's a couple of things that come up that we just, so one of them, and it's especially important for right now, is about vaccination. 
you know this is a hot button topic. Different people feel very strongly about being pro-vaccinators versus being anti-vaccinators. How does each side work with each other? Is there a right? Is there a wrong? What do we do in this situation? So we have, so we talk about relative to vaccination and uh, we will probably modify it even a little bit more uh, this summer to kind of get more of the COVID into the into there or whatever. Confidentiality, um, what does that mean? You know, um, we tell our students all the time about, you know, you have an error of things, you know, students getting on the elevator and discussing a patient, some patient amongst each other, there's other people in the elevator. We don't do that. I'm um, talking about other students. You know, confidentiality is a huge thing and we make sure everybody understands it. And then we have a, a case on the end of life discussion. You know, incredibly um, relevant to medicine, even nursing, you know, um, how do you deal with having to tell somebody to make it relevant to everybody, we'll have a thing about can how do you tell somebody, how do you break bad news, basically? How do you tell someone they have cancer? How do you tell someone who came in thinking that, oh, I just might have to get a minor filling in dentistry actually needs a full instruction. That's going to cost a whole lot more than what they thought it was going to cost. So we want everybody to get a grip and understanding of how all these issues come to play in our health professions. Next slide. Okay, so in our um, group presentations at the end, this is kind of, we wrap it up. We, um, and please ignore the dates that are on here. These are dates that were taken from last summer, but together and we given the group, we break the groups up into, there's always people in each group from medicine, dentistry, nursing, and we give them a health disparity issue. And so what they have to do is come together and uh, how does this impact communities? How will it impact them? health professional and um, coming up with a potential solution, if you will, for how this will occur. Next slide. I mentioned about this. So each day um, we typically have some aspect of our basic sciences curriculum involved in the program. Um, this is uh, starts off maybe lecture based, but then we do stuff that we can get you involved hands on. Um, I teach the anatomies and physiology and histologies. And so there are times when we have um, different programs I can utilize, um, whether it's 3D anatomy, whether it's histology on computer, but there are things that we can work through and kind of do some small group activities as well. Um, organic and statistics will be a part of our program again, or physics will not, but we're going to spend, we don't want to bog you down with just nothing but basic sciences all day, but it is an important part of the program. It's something that we are required to um, present to you as well. So we're going to get you some basic background in all these. And, you know, we've got freshmen and sophomores in Chappep. So some of you will have taken some of this before. Many of you will have never taken any of these courses. So we're aware of background and where people might be in their college education and make sure we're getting you, you know, some information that would be beneficial to you regardless of where you are in your education. Next slide. Um, I mentioned about interprofessional education. So, you know, where I want to go with this is, you can see that down at the bottom, student panels and faculty presentations. So what we've done um, is each week we had an evening where we spent together as our IPE groups. And we break you up into small groups. And um, in the past, we had kind of like uh, given some funds for like Grubhub and some other stuff so that people could actually, you know, get in at dinner. Sit down with, um, we try, try and turn this over to our students, um, our teachers, and they run some different things relative to how medicine, dentistry, nursing come together. We'll bring in pharmacy and other types of educational aspects as well and relate it to different types of problems that might come up in the interprofessional arena. Next slide. Okay, so you can see, I mentioned earlier, make sure that we're getting you prepared for application to that professional school choice. So I've talked about professionalism ethics already. I um, just want to, um, so we get a session about survival skills. We get our students from our three different programs in together and they talk about how they have survived. It's all pretty similar. It doesn't really matter what program you are. Survival is survival in all the health professions programs, but 
we want you to hear it from the students because they're the ones who are having to deal with the program and, and survive and get through. You know, for a lot of students, the study skills that they had coming in has served them well going forward. For a lot of people, it was a huge change. When you get into the health profession schools, most of the time it is an eight to five day. And most students aren't prepared for that eight to five day that they're gonna face when they come into school. And it's a big shock that I'm in class or, or lab or somewhere from eight in the morning till five night. Yeah, you are. And then you're going home and studying and doing other stuff as well. That's a big shocker. So we try to people get prepared. Um, we're gonna do interview, mock interviews, get you prepared for the aspect of it. Um, mentoring, we always wanna make sure that you have a or hopefully you had one before you came in the program, but as you saw from UAB, we're gonna ensure that you get mentored throughout the program and then get someone who is that mentor even going forward after the program is over with. Incredibly important. How to write your personal statement. You, you're writing a personal statement for your application to this program, but is it different for uh, applying to a professional school? The answer is typically gonna be yes. We're gonna show you how to best write that personal statement get you to write a personal statement and it's going to get read and um, edited by multiple people because you know you always want to make sure multiple people have read your personal statement and then we have a couple of different discussions about going through the admissions process with all, all that sort of thing i believe i've talked about the rest of it so you can go to the next slide for me um Literacy is an important part. I'm not going to go through every one of the aspects of it, but um, we have financial literacy, um, all the programs do, um, that goes you know, into a lot of different detail about how to set financial goals, plans, you know, about loans and different things or whatever, because a lot of this is information I can tell you I had no know about when I was going through my educational process, and I would have loved to have had uh, information about this as a student. So it's valuable. I mean, these things that you're gonna think, oh, it's boring, and it might be boring is probably one of the more important things that we go through with you because do you want to graduate from school in huge debt or minimize the debt that you graduate with? And so we'll kind of go into this. Uh, I've just got a couple of slides left. So next slide. Um, I'm gonna skip past this one. Let's go to the next slide. So as I mentioned, wellness is an important part of what we do. We have a few different people who come in and talk to you about nutrition and the role that nutrition plays in so many different things. You know, we tell our students all the time about wellness and about how nutrition, eating right, taking care of yourself is a huge part of doing successfully as a professional student. How do you handle stress and at the same time avoid burnout? Boy, that's, a, that's an important one, especially with COVID with everybody kind of being virtual and not at you know, the school as much, those are ones that we really want to try and make sure our students understand. A lot of what we do is some small group stuff where you know, we'll do yoga um, from the classroom and get everybody involved. We do a Tai Chi activity. We do meditation. Um, we take you know, some decompression moments or whatever. So we're doing all kinds of things to help you know, wellness play an important role. Slide, please. So just, this is, I'm just gonna show it on you so that people understand, we, each of our programs take students from all over. We're not just like, I'm in Houston. We're not just taking a bunch of people from Texas. Yes, we take a lot from Texas. Um, as you can imagine, we get a ton of applications from the state, but then we also take people from other areas around the US. So find the program that you feel is you're most interested in, best fits you, and uh, that program. Next slide. And this is my last slide, Tony. Um, so I'm gonna leave you with this. It's something I want you to think about. This is one of the first things we do is come in, but you can already be thinking about it. What are your goals coming in as a scholar? What do you hope to get out of the program? You know, kind of why are you here? We do reflection at the end of each day, and it's about different types of things or whatever, but from day one, we want them to think about this. What were your goals? And then towards the end, we're gonna ask them, did you accomplish your goals? Okay, make time for reflection. This is one of the biggest lessons I learned that I incorporate into my daily life is making time for reflection. Hopefully 
you know, sometime during, usually it's the end of the day for me. So that's all I've got, Tony. Uh, thank you, everybody. And be answering questions just a little bit. Thank you, Dr. Spears. And you know what? The piece that I love the most about which, about your specific program was the action, that, that wheel that you went over as far as like, you know, the, the students themselves, that self-reflection piece, that's important, especially during this time of COVID. Um, so thank you for, for doing that for our scholars. It's critically important. You got, you know, Tony, um, I, I've probably got like four or five different wheels. I only had time to show one, but um, there's just so much that goes in the program. So thank you. Thank, thank you so much for sharing that. I'm now going to turn it over um, to the University of Washington so that they can give us insight into their program. Take it away. You're still muted. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. It's nice to see you all here. And um, I wanted to share some information about the University of Washington's SHPEP program. My name is Nora Coronado, and I'm the director of the program. Um, we've had our program for over 30 years now with different faculty and staff who've been uh, managing the program over the years, but uh, we are happy to be doing, uh, providing this program every year. Um, as you can see, our program starts June 21st and ends July 30th. So it's a little bit later than the other programs that you heard about today. Uh, let me see if it's gonna... Let me see. I may have to pause and start again because this one's not moving it forward. I'm sorry to say. So let me look at a different one. Hang on a moment, please. Okay, let's see if it's going to flip slides here. There you go. Um, so our program focuses on, as all programs do, medicine and dentistry, but we have also have the addition of this uh, School of Public Health. So we have that public health component. These are just some photos of our medical center, uh, UW Medicine, and also the iconic um, Space Needle along with Mount Rainier. Uh, as you are quite aware at this point, there are 12 program sites. There are three programs on the West Coast, uh, the University of Washington, Western University, and UCLA. Um, but we encourage students to apply to uh, programs across the nation. Uh, we are one of five programs. As I mentioned, all of the programs offer some curriculum around medicine and dentistry. And there are five programs that offer some uh, curriculum around public health. And this is the time when I share some of my, uh, the considerations when I do webinars with students. So as you know, all sites are virtual this year. Um, I always encourage students to apply to three sites because it is a competitive program. And once in a while I'll hear from a student who will say, I'm only applying to one. And I say, no, you really should consider applying to three. And it's a lot easier this year since it is virtual so you don't have to leave your own home site um, if you don't want to. So it's a great time for those who have less flexibility in their schedules. Um, the other thing to consider is that um, is the time. So some programs, uh, for example, if we start our program, if a program starts on the East Coast at 9 a.m., it's really, and you're on the West Coast, it's really a 6 a.m. start. And for some students that works fine. And for a lot of students, it doesn't work very well to start that early. Um, so note your start and also, so not, note your start time, but also note the start date. I know that our program uh, starts later because uh, at the University of Washington, spring quarter ends later than most. Um, this year, all sites are offering the $600 stipend, but on top of that, um, they are also given a food allowance of $100 per week, so a total of $1,200, since you will be um, 
partaking of the program from home instead of on campus. And at the University of Washington, uh, we take 40 students who are interested in medicine, 20 that are interested in dentistry, and 20 in public health. So this gives you an idea. It's a sample of our weekly schedule. So what you can see here is that we offer our program from 9 o'clock a.m. Pacific Standard Time to around 20, uh, 1230 p.m. or 1 o'clock p.m. So we, have, we made a conscious decision to do this because we recognize that students um, experience Zoom fatigue. And we also recognize that students, if they're uh, working from home, um, they may have childcare that they're taking care of, whether it's their own children or siblings. Um, they may also have work or uh, taking a class. So we wanted to make sure that they knew that they could expect that our classes will be held from 9 to 1230. Um, our classes are synchronous. So it's 99% synchronous for our program. And that's another way for students to get to know one another. So in the classes, there's breakout sessions, and that's so students get to interact with one another every day. Um, each of the classes, as you can see, are taught uh, twice a week, but I really, and the guided wellnesses as well, um, and pathways. But I also wanted to share from this slide that we do have study hall. Um, I show it here on a Sunday because students like to uh, work together on Sunday, but we also have offered it in uh, the afternoon or evenings. And we also have um, some ancillary programming um, in this week that I'm showing you, which is week two, uh, professionalism. And uh, we had one of our alumni uh, teach this class last year, and it was Denise Martinez, who is the director of the University of Iowa program and had done the SHPEP, it was MMEP at the time, at the University of Washington. So it was great to invite her back to speak. Um, all our program or our classes are recorded. So if students need to go back and look at something, they're welcome to do that. Um, another piece I wanted to add, if I can remember what it was, um, I will have to get back to it and see if it, if it comes to mind. Oh, oh, I know what it was, the office hours. So we do have office hours. Our, um, our instructors and, action, and all offer uh, office hours throughout the program. So I wanted to share a little bit more information about each of these aspects of the program. So the classes, we teach three classes. And so we actually teach four classes, but all students will take population health and biology. And then students are given a choice between taking organic chemistry and biostatistics. And um, public health students will not have a choice. They will actually be taking the biostatistics because they uh, we'll be taking that as public health students. So we want to make sure that they're seeing um, that curriculum um, in advance. And then the other students will have a choice about what about taking organic chemistry or biostatistics. Um, last year, we did have a theme that we for uh, our classes and our focus last year was on diabetes. So we talked about it in terms of micro to macro. So we started with population health that week and looked at it at a larger level and got smaller and smaller as we went taught biology and then organic chemistry. And the students seem to really like having a theme around uh, an issue. We haven't decided what our theme will be this year, but it was good to hear from student feedback that they really enjoyed that and could see the connection between the classes. And, and, and that was really important. Um, our wellness program, we are, um, we're teaching that twice a week and we will be using a, a model by, um, from the Cultural Somatic and Training Institute. And this was by, some of you may have read my grandmother's hands. And so it's based on that racialized trauma. So we'll be using some of that work. And that curriculum is really around, um, is strength-based strength and on, um, focused on resilience and joy. So I'm looking forward to how that will be implemented in our program. It, I think it will be really good and important. And we're offering uh, wellness, as I mentioned, twice a week for an hour each time. So it will allow for some nice discussion and dialogue among the students. And I think that is a nice component of that. We also frame mental health. We will be talking about mental health, but we're really framing it again, as we are the class in terms of wellness. So we always talk about our body being well, but what? how do we make our whole body, including our minds well? And so, 
Um, we're hoping that uh, that provides less stigma to mental health. Um, and the other issues that I that we will be covering in the wellness program are um, imposter syndrome, but also looking at, at imposter syndrome in terms of the infiltrator. So you'll see what that looks like. Um, stereotype threat and microaggression. So it should be a really exciting program. Um, pathway program is also something that the students have really enjoyed. So I mentioned that um, in general, students are in the same classes and are with one another the whole time. The only time that they really separate out is for their pathways. So we have a dental pathway, a public health pathway, and a medicine pathway. And this is the time where we talk about the MCAT, the GRE, the DAT, um, the admissions process. So we have somebody from admissions come in, um, the interview, uh, the personal statement. And we also have students develop a roadmap um, so what are their plans when they leave here? What classes are they take? What are some of the things that they're going to include as they progress in their academic career? Um, and this is another reason that students really like this is that we bring in our guest speakers from uh, commu uh, communities who are similar to their own communities from which they come and they tell their personal stories or their journeys in, in becoming successful and becoming that health provider that they chose. So that's really fun for students to see. Now, the issue with this is that we do have that separated out. So what is nice is that we are recording them and we know a lot of uh, students are undergrad or are doing a public health degree and then they wanna go into medicine or they wanna do an MD, PhD or a DDS, MPH. All of those opportunities are there. So in recording the pathways and all the other programs, they can go back and learn um, the application process and how to matriculate into those other programs. So I think that's an, that's nice. I think a lot of sites are doing that as well, um, but students that can actually go back and look at those and we encourage them. The students, you're early in your careers and we want you to make the decision that's right for you. So if, it, if, if you wanna do some research in some of these areas, we really um, highly encourage that. Um, something new that we're including this year because we cannot do um, shadowing um, yet uh, in our community, very little is happening. So we decided to do informational interviewing. And this really came from, as I mentioned, Denise Martinez, when she came and spoke to us about professionalism. And so we will set up the first informational interview with a provider for the student. And, um, you, will, and, uh, and you will use some of the things that you learned in the professionalism um, class or um, session. And then the second time, we will ask you to set up your own informational interview with a provider. And the hope is that this provider is in your community or where you are, where you're um, going to school, because the hope along with that is that this uh, person could turn into a mentor for you, but it also could turn into a shadowing experience when that time uh, arises and when, when that is more broadly open to folks. Another thing that uh, the students really enjoy are those virtual hands-on activities. And um, so we will be working, of course, with the dental school, uh, the nursing sim lab and, and the nursing school. And this year, Medical Laboratory Sciences has also joined us. So uh, students will get uh, care packages with some of these uh, hands-on activities that we will be doing this year. The other um, aspect of SHPEP that is really important is that community building. And uh, we hire five TAs who were past alumni of the program. And they have, um, they join you in the classes. Um, they have a lot of responsibilities. They also do the study hall or are responsible for the study hall. And they are also responsible for putting, um, putting on some bonding activities. And this is a photo of one of our uh, TAs from last year. So some of the activities that they were engaged in last year were a haiku contest, an artwork showcase, affinity group chit chats, um, uh, and this was the cooking competition uh, that they did. It sounded like a lot of fun. They did movie nights, and then at graduation we always have a talent show. So it makes it a lot of fun for students. And even though it was virtual last year, you could tell that they really bonded and, and it was just a beautiful graduation at the end. Um, the students had a lot of nice things to say about one another and the talents of course are always phenomenal. 
So if you have any questions about the University of Washington program, feel free to reach out to me. Um, my email address is here, or you can use the email address that's on the shpep.org uh, website. I get emails every day from students asking questions, and so I'm happy to answer those. So don't be shy about reaching out to me. Um, and then a couple more slides. I, we do want to thank the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, who has supported this program for over 30 years. Um, it is so wonderful when we hear back from students who've gotten into a career of their choice. And even if it's not a health profession, we're happy for students if they're able to find something that, that really fits their personalities and that they like. And we hope that you will join us. Thank you, Nora. And you know what? I really like the idea of a theme using diabetes in order to really, you know, have students understand why chemistry is important, why biology is important. I think it's critical. Um, and it probably makes the, con the content and the lectures a lot more engaging. Um, as far as right now, um, we're at the question and answer portion, and I want to turn it over to Stephanie. Um, Stephanie, go on ahead and take it away. and. All right. Thanks, Tony. Hello, everybody. This is Stephanie um, from the MPO. Uh, we've got quite a bit of questions, so and I tried to scribble some down, and of course, my handwriting's the worst. But anyways, um, I think a lot of questions we're getting, and I know some of you guys kind of went over this a little bit, but if we could get maybe each site to kind of go over, um, like how many typical hours are you going to be spending in, during the day and the program and like kind of the scheduling. So if we could start with UAB, Texas, and then uh, Washington, if we could work that way. Okay, so um, we start about 10 in the morning and end about three, I think, something like that. We, But it won't be every day that you're in that time. So what we try to do is take into account East Coast or Pacific time to um, Puerto Rican time, for example. So. Um, it sort of fitted with everybody's schedule. So you'll be in class most days about, probably about four hours. One of the comments we got last year was, we didn't have enough bio breaks, et cetera. So we're, we're gonna have more breaks. We were very limited on time last year. So there'll be more opportunity for breaks. Um, and so roughly about four hours a day, maybe synchronous, if that, um, most days won't all be four hours. And then you've got to accommodate some time outside to um, to do the, the academic enrichment part. Um, I forgot to mention that the same thing that was mentioned by the other speakers, we record all our sessions. So if by chance you can't make a session that you're very interested in, it all gets uploaded to Canvas and is there for you to view after the fact or if there was something you wanted to hear. So it's variable, but about four hours a day, roughly. So it's, it's, it's very similar. Uh, we do each day will be 10 to 12. We'll take a break from 12 to 1. Then we're going to come back and do 1 to 3. And occasionally we might go 1 to 4. But what happens is usually morning session, uh, 10 to 12 is um, our, it's more lecture. So it might be basic sciences um, uh, type of work. In the afternoon, we try to do more hands on activities. We don't want in front of a screen just you know listening to lectures all day long so we figure a couple of hours is about enough we'll do that in the afternoon we'll do small groups um we constantly split our, our groups and we split you up into different types of small groups we with the same group of people all the time so we've got all kinds of different small groups of different aspects you'll be working with in the program so that's a typical day um 10 to 12 and then one to three or one to four. You can rest assured Fridays will never be one more. Fridays are you know, one to two even. So that's a, that's a usual day and it's synchronous. It's everybody is taking the same curriculum to get. We want you working together as an interprofessional team. Thanks, Robert. Uh, and at the University of Washington, you saw on our schedule that our programming is 9 a.m. to approximately 12.30 p.m. every day. 
um, we had the 15 minute bio break, we also had the same issue <laughs> because we had it last year's 10 minutes. They're like, no, no. Um, so we increased that to 15 minutes because we still wanted to keep it short enough that students don't leave um, and don't come back, um, but, um, but to keep the program running and get them out at around 1230 every day. Great, lovely. Um, along those lines, we did get a few questions about, and this is again, we could probably answer per site because it, it's gonna maybe vary a little bit per site, um, but people really wanna know about if they can take summer school classes on top of doing the program. Um, this is a common question each year, but since it's virtual, is there any flexibility with that? So what are you guys thinking? And you can start the same order, I guess, so we can keep the interruptions <laughs> low. low. Um, I think as long as it isn't a huge time commitment on your other courses, it's doable. You want to take advantage of this. We're, we're offering or we try to offer really enriching topics to you, something that will really help you in the long run. You don't get credit for it. We realize that. And, you know, so engagement is entirely self-driven. You can do other courses, but you really need to be mindful of whether you want to be fully participating in one versus the other. And there's no rule to say you can't, I don't think, but um, it's it's a time commitment. So whether you can do that and keep up with all your other work, we're not going to stop you, but we'd rather that you utilize the time that you're in this session to the best of your, you know, the, the best that you can do. So we're all probably going to be pretty similar about this. I mean, we prefer that we get your attention and that's part of why we're not making this an eight to five program is trying to allow students time to, you know, go, whether it's a job or you're taking a class or doing something else, you know, it's, it's, it was interesting last summer because when it was in person, this wasn't an issue. You were there and you did the program versus now with it being virtual there, it's much easier for people to be involved in other types of things. As was mentioned, uh, you know, I would say minimize and, you know, like it was mentioned, we record things, but not a case of what oh, you can take a full time job and then come watch all the recording, you know, in the evening or some other time. No, as you for our program, we're doing a lot of small group activities. We're pairing you together, working in groups. So that can happen if you're not there. So the expectation is we understand you miss a certain but we're not really trying to bring in people who are going to be a significant portion of the program. At the University of Washington, um, we, we actually had the students last year sign a contract because we wanted to make sure that they knew what the expectations were, that they would be in class from this time to, to that time. Um, we do think that's important because as Robert said, we do have those breakout sessions where you're working as a group and when you're not there, you know, your cohort or the folks in your group are missing what you can bring to the session. And because and everyone comes with um, information that's important for others to hear and a perspective. So we think it's really important for students to be in class. We ask that if they're not, that they let us know in advance that they have a doctor's appointment or something come up that we're informed of that. But the expectation is that students are there um, and students, we, as I mentioned, we do recognize that they may have childcare or they may have work um, that they take on. And that's why we wanted to limit it to a certain time period that we would have them. Um, and then, you know, and students, I would say they could take probably one class, but you can't take a full load and take this on top of it. That would be really difficult. And then I think you would miss the value of this program, which also, you know, part of that value is that networking with other colleagues that you will, you know, have the opportunity to stay in touch with for a long, long time. That's often what I hear from alumni is like, I made these connections, lifelong connections, and I'm still reaching out to these folks and we're still talking. So we don't want that aspect of the program to be missed. Um, so that's why it's important to be part of it. Thank you. That was great, everybody. Um, the next question is for um, Jasmine. So how has SHPP impacted your, your path, the direction you're going? 
Um, so that's a great question. I would say that SHPEP is unlike any program that I've ever been a part of. Um, in college, you'll find there's a lot of pre-med programs out there, but not, not like SHPEP where you're with other students who identify with racial minorities. And like I said before, sometimes you're one of the only ones in a STEM class or in a program that does identify with a racial minority. And so the premise that SHPEP, that's all that this program is um, focused on is just one of a kind and it's amazing. And my emphasis is on the empowerment that I felt from this program and the empowerment that I met the SHPEP um, directors and they just inspire you so much and really just fill you with the empowerment that you have every capacity to pursue your goals. And like I said, that's just one of a kind and unlike any experience I've had. Great, thank you, Jasmine. Um, next one to one of the sites if they have some advice, but uh, what would you, what advice would you give if um, you had an applicant that was kind of toying between dental or medical, or they're not really quite sure which one they, sh they should apply to, what track they should apply to? I, well, I'll At UAB, all 80 of our scholars get the opportunity to experience all four discipline. So should you have an interest initially in one, you'll get to uh, observe the optometry students day and to speak with their faculty on from lectures. So you'll have an opportunity at least to take a peek into that other uh, discipline. So I think that that may be true across all sites, but I know for certain at UAB is part of the interdisciplinary um, pinnacle that's a part of our health system and it, it's just across the board. So I think you would get to see them all. If I can also add, sometimes students come in saying they want medicine and they see the optometry side of things or they see the dental side and it sparks a passion. And so just because you say, I want to do medicine does not mean you're going to do medicine. You, you, that's one of the advantages of this program is you get to see, like Ms. Maddox said, you see so much about different programs that you didn't know. And so it's, it gives you a chance to think really long and hard and be edu educated in your choice of career. You don't want to be 10 years into a career and hate it. So, you know, that happens to people. You want to know as much as you can about a career path before you start it. And then, um, you know, and being able to, co the continuity of connection with the past Chapep students, with the faculty, and I'm sure this is the same across all sites, is, is valuable because you can talk and, and talk this out with, with them as well. One comment like this. And it's not medicine dentistry, it's any of the programs, is oftentimes applicants want to know like success rates for applying to the part of the dental part, or pharmacy part of the nursing, or whatever. And they do the game of trying to the route that they think is going to give them the best chance of getting into the program. That's the wrong attitude and wrong way to go about the program. Um, yeah, she may not be definitive for which career pathway you go. And that's great. That's as all of us say, it's this program is going to help with, you know, don't play the game of, oh, well, I want to know all the applications and acceptances, and then I'm going to get the pathway that I think will get the getting in. Because then oftentimes compared or you might be working on stuff that's not going to be of your primary interest. So, you know, go in with the attitude, um, you know, I want to focus on X. But be open to you know what the programs have to offer as well. Thank you very much. Um, one other point I just wanted to add to that is you are allowed to apply to one site as a medical, one site as a dental. Um, you can mix match it that way if you're interested in trying out that way. Um, just know that you can't apply to one site under different tracks so they have to be spread out like that. 
Um, another question that we got quite a few on is the experience section. Some students feel concerned that they may not have enough experiences, um, particularly in their level right now, and also with the pandemic making it limited to have these extracurricular experiences and activities. Uh, could we speak to that a little bit, what you guys are looking for? Start on this. Um, this is Nora from University of Washington. When we review applications, we're not looking for that student that has a 4.0 necessarily and has a whole list of activity, activities that they've done. Because part of the how we look at it is that is there how can we help you? So are you far enough along that you don't really need our help, or are there some areas where we can help? Um, boost um, your um, success. And so those are some kind of, those are a couple of the things that we tend to look at. Yeah, I think for us, we kind of approach it the way we do for on the medical school side of things. It's called that kind of holistic, that full holistic approach. So we take a look at everything. We look at your personal statement. What does it say about what, what's your drive to coming into the school? So metrics, aren't necessarily the be all and end all. And also experiences, you may not know what experiences you need for the various professions. That's something we can help guide you with. So what will enhance your resume and your application? How do you approach that application? How do you reflect on those experiences as well? So when you come to apply, that you're really, really well informed about what the best way to, to apply. So that's a little bit off the, the question was more, what do we look for? Um, there's nothing we don't have like a, a formula for how we how we look at people we kind of look at where what your background is whether you know what your personal statement says we look a bit at the metrics but just because you don't have a 4.0 won't exclude you I mean that we there's a was it 2.5 GPA is the is the cutoff for applying so why would we say we only want 4.0 so we, we're just looking for, and we we look for a diverse class as well so it, we're kind of you know take a lot of different aspects into account. So just write the best application you can. Don't worry about the fact you may not have all those experiences. You're only early on in your, in your careers anyway. So you've got time to build on that and we can help you know what would be the good. So I mentioned before, we have some of our past students tutoring. They're doing virtual tutoring for us this year for the, for the Birmingham City Schools they wouldn't have known that that would be a good application um, aspect of their application. So we help them with things like that too. So just because you're not ready quite yet with all these great experiences does not exclude you. Great. We have people applying as freshmen. Um, you know, what are their experiences now? You know, they probably haven't, a chance, haven't had a chance to go do a lot of things. This is not the same as you know someone applying to actually medical uh, nurse whatever the case may be where they're seniors and we expect a lot more out of them so you know everybody's unique everybody kind of has a story to tell us what's your story you know i think a lot of it's so important you know why i, I keep focused, why are you doing the program why do you want to do the program besides just well i think it's going to help me you know go to a professional school that's one aspect but how do you think this is going to help you, you know, grow to um, to learn about learn about or whatever? So, tell your story. All right, thanks, guys. Thanks for the uh, detailed answers on that one. Um, so. We're going to go ahead and close out. So I just wanted to make two announcements before we do. Before I give it back to Tony. Um, one is there was a lot of questions about the stipend, so I just wanted to go over that real fast. Everyone that participates will get a stipend and also a food allowance. And the, distri the distribution of that is actually on each site page. You can check that out there or you can email the sites directly on how they give out the stipend. Um, and then last, but definitely not least, our deadline is this Friday, February 5th at 11.59 p.m. Eastern time. I cannot stress that enough. Do not be on the West Coast trying to apply at midnight because it's already closed. So make sure you know your time zone, make sure you get that in on time. Um, same thing with the materials, your transcript and letter of rec. It must either be emailed by the deadline or postmarked by the deadline. 
Um, and yeah, I think that's it. And I'll give it back to Tony. Thank you. Thank you, Stephanie. And you know what? I really want to emphasize what you said about deadlines. Know your time zone. It is critically important to it. You know, if you're serious about getting to this program and you know participating, you need to know your deadlines. And you know what? It helps to stay organized and it have a calendar, a reminder, and things like that. Um, what I would honestly say, um, you know, if you need help, you know, this is again, this is the last week that you can apply. We have a dedicated services contact center that you can contact. Um, there are numbers on the screen right here. It's toll free. Um, we have a lot of um, information on our website, and you can also email us as well at shpet at aamc.org. As far as this session, it will be recorded and will be placed on our YouTube channel. On any of our social media streams, we're at shpet connect. So if you need information about the program, you're just trying to see, you know some ambassador testimonials like Jasmine shared earlier during the presentation in the chat, you can get that just by visiting our social media channels. Um, thank you for joining us. I want to thank our, our presenters here as well. Um, you did an amazing job. You were very detailed. And everyone, have a good night.